although it was well over 150 years ago that patents were filed for the first practical electric motor, it was some time before this newfangled method of powering transport and machinery started to take over from the horse and steam engine. Electric motors would probably have taken over much sooner if they had possessed the best characteristics of both horse and steam power, these being the ability to start smoothly against a full load, together with excellent speed control over their operating range. Indeed, until recently, for some types of electric motor, it's true to say that these features were relatively difficult or even impossible to achieve. From the early days of industrial electric drives, the term drive referring to the machine to be powered, its motor and wiring, for applications where gentle starting characteristics and speed control were the essential requirements, it was the direct current motor that was the most widely adopted. However, DC motors, although providing good speed control, do not come cheaply and require frequent maintenance. With the setting up of a unified electrical supply system in the form of the national grid, alternating current supplies quickly became the standard. And so the much less complicated and cheaper asynchronous induction cage rotor motor was the obvious choice for every application where smooth starting and speed control were not important considerations. So what about the AC induction motor? Is it right to consider it on the scrap heap as far as speed control is concerned? Well, before we can answer that, we need to take a closer look at a typical example. We're all familiar with the construction of a three-phase cage rotor motor. The end plates, the rotor, bearings, the stator housing the windings, and so on. And how a three-phase supply current flowing in the windings produces a rotating magnetic field inducing a current into the rotor bars, which in turn produce a magnetic field interacting with the rotating field within the stator producing torque, causing the rotor to turn, speeding up in the same direction as the rotating field. If the motor shaft were to reach the same speed as the rotating field, this would be known as its synchronous speed, and so are known as synchronous motors. However, with cage rotor motors, this does not occur, because there would cease to be a relative movement between the rotor bar conductors and the state of fields. And because no torque is produced, the motor would slow down to just under synchronous speed. Hence, this type of motor is known as asynchronous. The difference between synchronous and actual rotor speed is known as slip. And this will vary as the torque demand increases. So although cheap to produce and economic to run, the AC induction motor has the disadvantage that its speed is fixed at the design stage. And so unlike the DC motor, speed control cannot be achieved by simply placing resistance in the winding circuit. This would have no effect on the shaft speed, instead would reduce torque, causing the motor to stall and possibly be destroyed by other heating. Previously, where different speeds were required, this could be achieved within small limits. For instance, either 2,900 or 1,440 revolutions per minute by changing the winding connections in the starter. Limited speed control of AC motors, however, was possible, but required a special design of motor, having a wound rotor and commutator, with the speed altered by moving the brushes around the commutator by means of a hand wheel. The actual speed of a cage rotor motor is determined by the number of poles and the applied frequency. and This is known as its base speed and is usually indicated on the rating plate fixed to the motor housing. On this motor, we can see that if operated on a 50 Hz supply, the motor will run at 1,415 revolutions per minute, while on a 60 Hz supply, its speed will be 1,700 rpm. It follows then that the speed of a motor can be altered by varying the frequency of the supply to the motor, and it's this technology that we'll be looking at. Another disadvantage of the AC induction motor was that smooth starting, particularly under load conditions, was, until now, difficult to achieve. The most straightforward method of starting cage rotor motors is by connecting the motor directly to the full supply voltage. At standstill, when the supply is switched on, the initial starting current is heavy, typically six to nine times full load current. 
and so the torque at start is comparatively poor. So although inexpensive and requiring low maintenance, because of its fixed speed and generally poor starting characteristics, the AC induction motor appears to have serious disadvantages. But is this really the case? Well, perhaps it's a good time to get out of the rain and find some answers.